All right, we are live tonight. Welcome to the live stream Wednesday night. Hope you're doing great. Hope you're joining us in health wherever you're joining us from. And thank you for joining us. If you're watching this in replay, check the comments or check the description below for some chapters. I'll try to make some chapters that make sense. And you can watch this in replay a little faster than this long form version. Tonight, as you can see, I have my very special guest on, co-host tonight, Jackie of all trades. Jackie, thanks for joining me tonight. Say hi to everyone for us. Hi, everybody. Thank you again, Mark, for having me on tonight. I'm super excited about tonight's show. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, entertaining comments and let's having a chat tonight. Yeah, very cool. I'm glad to have Jackie on. So last week in the live stream kind of mentioned, hey, like, let's uh, get some of you guys on and let's talk about your kitchens, your kitchen renovations. And we thought, um, of course, Jackie was up for it. I thought it was a great idea to bring her on. She's a familiar face and just uh, able to talk us through her kitchen renovation and what she did and, you know, her process and her thoughts and the before and after pictures and what it looks like. And I, th I thought it would be, you know, and actually it was her idea <laughs> not to have her on but it was her idea to do this uh, content form. So Jackie, I appreciate that because uh, it was a really great idea. And so in, in honor of that, having you on as the first one, I think is really cool. So we're gonna have some fun tonight talking about Jackie's kitchen and just discussing discussing kitchen design in general. And then we'll jump into some questions of the week that came through this week on the channel and whatnot. So if you're watching from wherever you're watching from, put it in the chat feed, say hello to Jackie, say hello to me and ask your questions. And either one of us will jump on there and, and hopefully be able to help you out, answer your questions and, and chat. This is a, a real great community that that's being built here. And I just appreciate everyone who comes on the live stream just to uh, to hang out and talk about kitchens and whatever else happens. Now, before we go any further, we have two birthdays happening today. Uh, one is Jackie's mom. Now, we're not going to say how old Jackie's mom is because that's not appropriate. But today's Jackie's she's mom. She's 25. Birthday, so happy again. She's 25. Again. <laughs> Can you imagine? Again. This woman has grandkids and she's still 25. Wow. I got to find that that fountain. <laughs> so happy birthday. What's your mom's name instead of just being Jackie's mom? Patricia Jaggers is her name. Happy birthday, Patricia Mama. Jag <laughs> happy birthday. Very cool. Um, and another very special birthday is my daughter Eva's birthday today. She's 15, which is really cool. So happy birthday, Eva. Happy birthday to Patricia. It's, uh, it's really cool. So uh now that we have those things out of the way let's chat about your kitchen jackie um before we bring up some pictures just tell us a little bit of the history of you know what okay why you want to do a kitchen renovation what led you to do the types of renovations that you did and as we go along we'll, we'll jump into the chat say hi i see there's lots of people coming on and saying hi and um so we're just uh, thanks so much for being on everyone and just saying hi make sure you tell us hi, where you're Gammy. from where you're watching from <laughs> gammy's there yeah uh who else lots lots of people Kristen, hi jeff's on tonight um yeah. ivy happy with thanks for being on tonight i think uh she's gonna join us in a future one hey rm's on no spam tonight rm right all right cool uh all right and i Kelly's see Kristen. Here. Kristen's one of my yeah. co-workers she's on supporting me tonight Kristen hagerstrom awesome so this is our right, cool. introduction awesome. to your channel too mark Hey, cool. Thanks for joining us. We just we just talk about kitchens. Oh, Danielle's Some... on. We were roommates in college. <laughs> oh, wow. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> Jack and I are going to have it out later about some certain topics, but we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Danielle's already no. seen me perform plenty of times, so she knows I have my opinions. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you can take over the show. That's all good. <laughs> Uh, All right, so let's talk about tell, talk about your before. I have some pictures lined up. We'll bring them up here in a second. But oh, just yeah. tell us, Jackie, what's the what was the overall, you know, thought behind renovating your kitchen? Why did you need to? Mm -hmm. Did you just want to? Did you have to? What what what's what why? Well, here's the thing. Um, I moved into this neighborhood in 2013, and uh, I love the area. It's in the DC metro area. It's right next to the metro. I mean, it's like 15 minutes to walk there. Um, the area itself, Fairfax County, is really expensive. And so to get in this neighborhood, I had to go with a bit of a fixer-upper in the first place. And so I got this place at a bit of a discount um, because the kitchen had never been touched. Uh, the bathrooms had never been touched. And so um, the, the house has good bones, of course. But when I walked in the door, 
it was an OMG moment and you guys will see it in a second. But the real estate agent told me as soon as he saw the look on my face that, hey, all of this is kind of wrapped up into the purchase price, right? So I had to kind of look past that to say, okay, look at the space that I have. And I, you know, I've, I've loved the neighborhood. I don't regret buying this place. Um, but I knew at the time I poured all of my money into just getting the house. So at that time I was house rich, but if you looked at my bank account, there was no money. So I thought to myself, I'll take my time and save. And in about five years, three years, I'll go ahead and do a reno. Life did what it did. So many unexpected expenses happened. And that big chunk of change that I had taken my time to save, it just got, it just went up in smoke a few years back. But I'm like, Am I going to sit here and try again to save another five years? And I don't want to finance a kitchen. I really just do not want that bill on me. I would like to have something that's done and I don't have to worry about how I'm going to pay for it. And so that's how I ended up saying, you know what? I've got a small chunk of change. It was like at the time, $5,000. That's all I have. What can I do with this $5,000? to make the space that I have look a lot more pleasing. And I'll be honest, the pandemic is what made me finally pull the trigger because um, this became my office when I started working from home and I'm looking at that site, which we'll see in a second, day after day. And it started <laughs> to really wear on me and I'm like, we've got to do something. And uh, so I know I'm, I'm pretty handy, you know, and I'm a creative mind and pretty artistic. And so I said, um, let's get started. Having never done anything like this before, making plenty of mistakes, but learning as I went along and it got so much easier. And I didn't, you know, I couldn't see necessarily in from the beginning, but I saw the next step or so. And so I just kept moving. And the next thing you know, just little by little, because I still have a day job, I work eight hours a day. So yeah. maybe an hour in the morning, two hours before bed every day. It took me 12 weeks to complete this transformation, but I got it done. Cool. I got two questions for you. Yep. Um, moving into the house, not having the kitchen finished, do you, do you, did you find that to be actually like a positive or would you have rather moved into a house that, that the kitchen was finished? Oh. No question mark. I would have rather moved in and had the kitchen be blinging and blinging, but it was not. Mm -hmm. However, I found that once I signed on the dotted line and I handed over, you know, my entire life savings to these people for the chance to own this place, I really fell in love with the place even as it was. All the good, bad, and the ugly, the cracks, everything. And this kitchen, when I could come in and say, this is my kitchen, I loved it. And so for like right. a year, I had like love goggles on and I didn't even see how bad it was, <laughs> you know, and then it started to really wear on me and some stuff still persists and we'll go over that too. But yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would have preferred, but um, having also been in the kitchen for a while, I see the functionality and things that I would change if I had the opportunity. Okay. And then the second thing, uh, Jackie, you have your own YouTube channel, Jackie of all yeah. trades was, what, like what was the start of that like was doing the kitchen project and like what made you decide i think i want to have a, a youtube channel that deals with some of these issues is that was that part of that decision or did you just want to have a youtube channel no yeah, or was the kitchen was, like a big part that of that was part of it and honestly i don't think my friend christina is on now she was saying because you know i do renovations in other parts of the house so um, what you'll see is when I uh, go to show you pieces of the kitchen, um, you know, I've got balloons and stuff in the living room. But if I go around that corner, it's going to be another OMG moment because things are like, you know, but that's going to be on the channel, too. And so she'd seen the bedroom renovations and two of the bathrooms that I'd done. And she's like, you know, you should really be recording this. And oh, cool. so she started the channel for me and i said i know nothing about youtube but then i started kind of getting into it again like the kitchen just plunge in and just kind of see what happens and mm -hmm. uh, little by little um it's coming together but you know um my day job is starting to get in the way of me um putting out videos here but i'm going to release one this weekend and it's going to be on this very subject we're talking about today awesome cool that'll be good uh if you want to check out jackie's channel be sure to check the description below because i'll add a link to her channel and when that video comes out i'll also add a link specifically to that video is it come out on saturday um sunday sunday, sunday afternoon. Okay. okay and if i forget just email me and be like hey you said yeah, you put this video right. link. <laughs> because you're the one with the followers, Mark. I'm just trying to poach, okay? If I could get somebody no, no. to subscribe, 
you know, so you got to do your job and put it in the description below. <laughs> I'll do that. I'm telling you, it feels like an uphill battle, but just keep being consistent. It's, it's, it's fun. As long as you're having fun, that's the main thing. Yeah. I, all right. it, it's a great time. I'm having a great time. And I thank you all who have already gone to my channel and subscribed. It really, it, I mean, it warms my heart and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, it is an encouragement to keep going. So thank you. Yeah. If you're watching, please check her channel out and subscribe. Now we're going to look at the first before picture. So Jackie, are you ready? Yes. Now, now I know you know what it looks like and I know what it looks like because I have the picture <laughs> and, but when we, when we show you the, the after, like there's quite a transformation, but here, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. I'm going to look on the screen over here. So, but I'm looking. Right. So talk us through Jackie. What, oh, what is wrong? Yes. What is okay. wrong with your kitchen? Just, I mean, the, the better question mark is what's not wrong with the kitchen, you know? Um, the only thing that I like in here at this point is Joanne's graduation balloons, okay? She graduated in 2018, and, and the floor. That's like, those mm. are the two loves <laughs> that I have in this kitchen right now, you know? Um, let's talk blue from Mica countertops. Uh, we've got these bobbly blue plastic knobs. Some of them are cracked, by the way. All original, by the way, to the house. Um, the house was built in 1976, and these have been there since that time. I know that because I visit neighbors who have unrenovated homes, and theirs all kind of look exactly like mine, except we get different colors. I got blue, some people have yellow, some people have white, some people have red. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, I got the blue one and uh, uh, it's been here for, you know, as long as I've been alive, uh, essentially. And um, yeah, the that uh, vent hood up there, if you can call it that, I don't really know what you call that thing. It's like a, I don't know, a, 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 an eyesore. I guess we'll just call it that. Um, you can even see if you look closely behind that uh, uh, paper towel roll, there's actually the cord that comes down from it and it swoops oh, down. Oh yeah. And kind of, it dangles there and it it was it had grease caked on it and there was grease caked on the back of the wall back there as well um so it was, it was it, yeah it was all lovely and not only that but i i learned because i never really understood why above that uh that hood there's that uh it's it's not even the the uh yeah the space up there and yeah. it's because the cabinets are not level so that thing is level and the cabinets are not i learned this because mm. i was putting in my favorite uh, apparatus that we're not going to say the name of because, you know, certain people don't like to hear it. But I was putting that in. And when I tried to put that, you know, with the three letters in there, uh, what happened was it, it was kind of like this. But I realized okay. it's not the microwave. It's actually the, ca the cabinets. Cabinets. Themselves. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I like the blue countertop, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. You know what? What you would like even more is in the entryway before you come in here, there were cobalt blue bricks on the entryway floor with thick oh, cement wow. and it matched the countertops. So it was this, this, this cobalt blue glazed, you know, and it, what I learned about it was that they were, cause I was trying to have the floor change. There, there was a cement floor about this thick and what they did was they just slid the bricks down in there and then put the cement in. So they're, you know, a part of the floor forever, basically. <laughs> but it like all blue. like matched, you know, especially that nice glossy orange paint on the wall with the blue. That just made it even better. <laughs> and I really didn't give you a good picture of the uh, vanilla. It was a French vanilla um, white color on the ceiling that was also glossy. So it wow. was it was great. Okay, yes. let's move to the next picture. So, here we go. Now, in terms of layout, uh -huh. how do you, because you didn't change the layout, right? No, oh, yeah. You, you part, kept the layout. Part of my $5,000 change was leave everything where it is. Mm -hmm. And that meant with the fridge, I didn't even give it a second thought. I was going to get a new fridge, but it's going to be the exact same. And when I say exact same, I'm going to say that in quotation marks because I ran into a problem. I'm sure you know what I'm going to say. I got the exact yeah. same size fridge, um, but then it ended up uh, being like a quarter inch taller, like because of the feet or whatever. And uh, yeah, it would not slide in there. 
<laughs> just so I had to take the doors off on the cabinets above just to slide it in. And I've got pivot yeah. hinges too, which I learned are you know back in their day they were the hinge to have. It was like you know having the you know the door without any hinges at the yeah. time. You know that yeah. was the thing. So the I noticed them in the picture when I looked and yeah. I, I seen those and I thought those those are those are original. And you yes. kept those, right? Yes, I did. Because I yeah. kept the doors and I was like, look, I'm going to put the doors back and I know these fit and I don't have right. to think about it. And you know, when I put a little, it wasn't Goo Gone, it was um, whatever that other spray is I got. And if I didn't mm -hmm. have to name it for you right now, Mark, I would know what the name is. But I put mm -hmm. some of that Goo Gone type spray on there, sprayed it, uh, brushed it off and suddenly, hey, they were shining like new again. I couldn't believe it. They looked really nice. <laughs> I didn't have to spray paint them or anything. Perfect. Well, that works. So, yeah. So this so is, I mean, but so in terms of layout, you, you find that the, the layout, I mean, because you, you didn't have necessarily the budget to, to change the layout. Right. Um, I have a neighbor because so, I, I told you guys last time we live in like a community uh, townhomes. And so mm -hmm. a lot of them have similar, I mean, there's like four or five floor, floor plans. So I've got yeah. a neighbor and he had his whole, you know, the whole wall blown out, the ceiling okay. all raised to one level. You know, he said just doing that without cabinets or anything else, $12,000 just to even everything out. That's just to get us yeah. all like, you know, and yeah. uh, because right above my, um, uh, above the kitchen proper. So I'm sitting above the dining nook, but above the kitchen proper are the uh, two upstairs bathrooms. So there's the hallway bathroom and the master bath that are up there. So there are also plumbing pipes that are, so this right. area is recessed a little bit, you know? And so it's for, to accommodate. So you have to move all the plumbing up, you know, and then there's some sort Big of, deal. yeah, post involved. And I'm like, so that's 12,000 off the bat. And that's without touching any of the, you know, the niceties. Hey, hey, Dion! Hi! <laughs> I'm so busy talking. I haven't been manning the comments. I'm so sorry. But yes, yes. Hey, Dion. So I've got a, a bunch of friends at my church. You know, they're in, these guys are in Chicago Rejoice in Jesus Ministry. So we've all kind of been friends since since college. And so cool. I'm so, so happy to see them uh, supporting me here today. Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. None of my friends are saying hi. <laughs> Well, I know you got friends on here, Mark. I got a couple friends. I seen Rob on there. More there you are. Hey, Rob. <laughs> uh, no, this is awesome. Okay, so the so the kind of the point I was like with the layout is that you don't have to change the layout to really update the kitchen and make it look yeah. fantastic. When we look at your after pictures, like you'll see, there's quite a transformation, mm -hmm. and it, it's not always tied to the uh, the layout. And if the layout works, the layout works. So, for instance, next to your fridge, you have a nice landing area for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, countertop, and that's that's highly recommended. So, if something works, it works. And um, sometimes there's not a ne necessity to change something just for the sake of changing it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always change something. But all right, hey Rose yeah, is here. Yeah, Hi Rose. Yeah. For the record, I desperately. Hey Rose. I desperately wanted to change that, but I was looking at the reality of it and I'm like, I can't sit here one more minute and look at this and let's right. go with what we have. You know, you can make it beautiful. You don't have to sit here like this any longer. Right. Um, and um, what I want to underscore with this picture um, is the fact that um, I've got that new apparatus that sits above the new appliance over there. Um, you know, the three letter thing that we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. um, it's there, but uh, the doors, you see those doors are off. And the reason yeah. why I wanted to emphasize that is I spent, I told you it took me 12 weeks to do this. So um, this kitchen living room area was, cause the living room was kind of my workstation and I'm moving things in and out of the kitchen and you got to realize life goes on. You've got family, everybody's got to eat everything. So um, I'm living through this. And so, um, for several weeks, there were doors missing, you know, and that was part of the process. And I bought into that, you know, so um, luckily I'm not a super neat freak, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I can find calm in the chaos, but for somebody right. who really likes to have everything neat and tidy, that would not work. And I know that because my mother is one of those people and she just kind of had to, you know, and she kept it together because she could see where it was going, right? Once she yeah. started to see it, and you can see yeah, like that's important 
um, on the base of that peninsula already, you can see that I've um, already lined that. You see, um, yeah, like Wayne. So that, I was going to ask you, you. You did that yourself. That wasn't. I don't think yes. that was in the other picture, was no. it? No, no, it wasn't. I did, did that myself. Did we see that? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can see there, everyone. Like right. that's. If you look at that peninsula, yeah, it's just flat. And then Jackie added this uh, shaker wainscoting style. Right. Yeah, I'd already started. So that, what yeah. did you use to do that? Is that uh, what kind of like is it just a molding? Right. Yeah. And I had this and, you know, if I had been smart about this, I'd have brought it up here for you guys because I have extra scraps of all of this stuff. Um, okay. of the, but um, I used it was a poplar. It was, um, I think, a quarter inch by uh, two and a half inches wide by 48 inches. The, the uh, Home Depot was selling those for like. Uh, and when I first started buying them, they were like two dollars and twenty five cents for you know a forty eight inch long piece. And so, right. Um, but now that, I was that's a detail. Like that detail is that something because you did it on the side of your wall cabinet as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's a really smart detail. So is that is that something, you know, that you had? Like, a lot of people wouldn't have done that. Yeah, uh, you know, what, I was thinking about what brought like, that on. Well. Um, because when I do like in the bedrooms, like I've built uh, headboards and, um, you know, in the bathroom, I've done some, um, you know, feature wall details. I always, when I'm looking to make a, a change or a renovation, I start looking at um, Google images. So I just, just do an image search. And so I started doing an image search on kitchens and kitchens with yeah. islands and uh, kitchens with peninsulas and looking at the ones that I liked. And I noticed this pattern, the ones that I like all had like, you know, scroll detail or some little something that would set them apart. And so it wasn't like basic. And so I was wondering, you know, how can I make, cause I'd already started doing it on the doors, the shaker, you know, kind of mm -hmm. um, uh, framing on there. I'm like, well, how can I replicate something like that here? And, uh, and I, I saw a YouTube video where a woman actually did something like that. You yeah. know, some people were doing ship clap and some other stuff. And I said, hey, I yeah. can easily do this. Um, one thing to mention with that, because, um, again, this was a process I'm learning. I made several mistakes and I love the peninsula. So don't get me wrong, but I made a mistake on the peninsula. I mean, I messed it up from the beginning because, as I told you guys, I'm doing a little piece and then life gets in the way. I have to work or I'm tired. I go to bed and then I come back. So I started that back long side there and I measured the first uh, box at 16 and a half inches. It should have been 17 and a half all the way across. And so I realized that I'd messed up because I'd measured the second one at 17 and a half and the first one was at 16 and a half. And so after the second one had dried, that's when I realized it was off and I was going to have a big gap at the end. So then it was like making up the space. So I think on the very end, the, the last box is 19 inches and the first one is 16 and a half. And it bothered me for so long until I realized nobody's going to notice that but you. But now I'm telling you guys, I'm like bearing it all right now. Okay. Cause I messed but, up with my math. But that's exactly the right point. No one's ever going to notice that. No, never. Nothing to and, lose sleep uh, over. But, it, over but this show. is a very, um, <laughs> like, this is a real smart detail. So I just want to applaud you on that because, you know, when we, like, in doing custom cabinets for a long time, one of the big upgrades that people would want is to have, like, a finished door panel on the side of a cabinet. And to, to be able to do it like this, uh, it, it really makes, like, the outcome when we look at the, the final after picture, it, it really gives it that like extra wow factor so that's I, I think that was really smart that's something that stood out to me anyways is, mm -hmm. is that particular that particular detail very yep. cool and this was also the day that the countertop folks were coming in because i was anxious okay. to put that backsplash up but i knew i couldn't do anything with backsplash until i got the countertops in and so they were coming like the next day or either that day i can't remember but i um set everything to where you know they could just grab and go um, but I was still living life there. So it looks like, yeah, we've got a few things that are up there. So it was just so that it'd be good. easier to grab my stuff and, uh, they could do what it's, they needed to do. It's cool it. that you can live through it, live through the renovation. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's important that you can do that. Cause it, like you said, it took, it took a long time mm -hmm. and these things, you know, you can be pretty frustrating at point at sometimes. Yeah. All right, here we go. Now, this is before <laughs> I see that cord. That is just, ain't it lovely? 
Oh, yes. I won't tell you. That's probably not up to code. <laughs> that's not up to code. Come on. No. Yeah. And serious. You, touched it, you know, when you touched it, it was tacky too. Like the grease was on there <laughs> that thick. So you touched the cord and it didn't matter how much I tried. It was so thick on there, Mark. I mean, it just feels sorry for me. It was bad. But, you know, I, I held on to it because I'm like, eventually. And another thing I should tell you about this. I was so convinced that we did not have a ventilated sy system to vent anything out of the house because right. somebody had taken a flat panel and just put it up there. Um, whoever renovated before, they just put this big piece of wood up there and this thing was not venting outside. It was just kind of recirculating. And yeah. so when I finally um, started to do the renovation and remove things, I pulled that off and I would it was I was flabbergasted that there was even, you know, a duct anything back there. I, I, I didn't know that that was there. You know, <laughs> that was a surprise. That's, that's a good surprise though. Yeah, and then suddenly my world opened up to so many other thoughts about, oh, what can I do? Because you know, I was looking to replace this thing, which I think on Amazon I found something similar model, same size, same company for seventy bucks, and I was like, well, I guess I'll just you know kind of update that and you know get the right. But then I was like, no, I can do more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I think the next one is. I think the next one, Jackie, let me just look at my, look at this slide. Yeah, okay, so the next slide is your new kitchen. But I just wanna jump over to the comments for a second. And I got a couple highlighted here. Uh, we got uh, we got a hi mom coming in. Oh, is there a hi mom? Yeah. Hi, sweetie, I don't see you. Oh, there she is. That's my baby girl, the newly married woman. <laughs> my child is growing up still. <laughs> but she can't grow up before I do, and I'm still growing up. So until I get grown, you know, she's always going to be a little behind. I feel you. Kelly's asking, how did you and Mark connect? How did we connect, Jackie? Mark called me out on his show. That's what happened. So what happened? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Pro probably through. Probably, I think it was just through. Um, YouTube. A YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think so. on your YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah, I think you comment on something. I tried, I mean, this last video, I didn't get a chance to comment on anything because it, it's mm -hmm. been a little whirlwind. But um, yeah, I think I we re just commented through that and yeah. and yeah, one thing led to another. So here we are. Right. And, um, and and I knew that Jackie would be a great fit to for something like this. Just you're great on camera. You get great personality, great to talk. So it was just, it was a natural, natural thing. So yeah i mean it's pretty cool to highlight that you know here we are i'm in on the east coast of canada you know jackie you're in virginia yep you know here we are on a live stream <laughs> so the internet's a pretty a pretty small place it's a pretty cool place and to be able to connect like that was was pretty cool so definitely and this was a pretty this was a great question as well um kelly do cabinets get out of sync as the house settles and i i'd say yeah with new construction a, ca a cabinets could get out of sync if um, if that if the house settled. It's definitely a possibility. Um, you got to watch out for that. And you know, can it be fixed? Yeah, I, I think it can be fixed. Uh, if it was really really bad, you could level those out. But um, yeah, cabinets can get out of sync depending on you know how how new the construction is and, and when it settles. I know my house, the renovation on on, on our you know put an addition on this house. And it um, it settled, and some of the gyp rock kind of cracked in places. It's just the way it is. Um, so that can happen. Mm -hmm. It can also happen that your house is crooked to begin with, <laughs> even if it is brand new. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter if it's old or new; it can be it can be crooked. So lots of people saying hi, and that's uh, really appreciate everybody uh, being on. Let's go to oh, your. Hi, Jeff. That's my boss. <laughs> Is this your boss right here? Jeff Vick. <laughs> so you can't complain about your work on this one. That's cool. All right, this is some, oh, Jackie's gone. Her device connected, I'll wait for her to reconnect. And uh, so while we're doing that, let's just jump to the questions of the week because I want her to talk us through um, her after picks 
of her kitchen, which is really good. So I'll wait till she comes back on. Uh, she just got disconnected. So let's just jump over again. Thanks everyone for being on the live stream and just uh, saying hi and joining Jackie and I, as we talk through her renovation of her kitchen and just what she did. And you can see uh, just the before how, um, you know, what it looked like and, and her thought process of what she wanted to do to change it up. And let's just go to some questions of the week. These are all countertop relay questions and um, some I thought were, were interesting and good and, and some things that have come up recently uh, and questions that I've gotten in the past before. So I thought it would be a good idea to talk about them tonight. And the first one was this, is Dolomite a good countertop choice? Now, let me know in the comments, have you ever heard of Dolomite? Because it is not the most popular countertop choice that's on the market. And in fact, out of all my years selling cabinets, selling countertops, 20 years uh, in the industry, you know, actively selling, um, I've never sold Dolomite. All right, Jackie's back. Hey, Jackie. Uh, we just jumped to questions of the week for a second while I was waiting for you. Oh, thank so, you. So, so Dolomite is um, a natural stone. It's sort of like a, a little, a little softer than um, granite um, has similar consistencies of granite and, and quartzite. And when I got this question, I'm not a professional at Dolomite. I, I've never installed one. Like I said, I never sold one. And so a lot of these questions that come in, I mean, just because I have a, a kitchen <laughs> channel doesn't mean, I mean, I don't know everything. I have to research stuff as well when I don't know a question. So I found a really good article that talks through all the points of what Dolomite is. It's from a stone yard. And although they, they would sell the product, I mean, they're not, they don't make the product. It's from the ground. So it's a natural product. It was a really good um, uh, article. And I'll link it in the description below when this goes into replay. And just so you can have a look at it, if you're interested to learn about what Dolomite is, and is it something that you would consider for your kitchen? Because there's so many options out there and it is a beautiful choice. And natural stone is always a good way to go. But um, there's some things that aren't marketed to the public, like other things. So right now, you're going to see quartz, just quartz, 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 everyone wants to sell you quartz. Uh, they will sell you granite. Quartzite is getting more popular, but the days of Corian and these acrylic surfaces, although they're great and they're they're really a great product, they're just not marketed. You know, same as soapstone, same as this dolomite. You know, a lot of these products, they just don't have the, the push that these other things have. So, you know, that's just the industry and that's the way the industry goes. And, and maybe in, in another few years, it'll be this new product that everybody is like pushing. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get more into some, some, uh, porcelain. I think that's probably going to be the, the next big thing. I got some new porcelain samples came this week and I hope to have, uh, my friend Nico from Italy on a live stream to talk about porcelain because he's, he's a rep for that company. It'd be interesting to hear about it because it's not something we hear a lot of. And, um, so interesting. Yeah. Is Dolomite a good, uh, countertop choice? It might be, and this article will help you um, if you go read that. So I'll link to that in the description below. So that was a good question. I love getting questions like that because it helps me to learn as well. And I don't want to describe everything from that article. You can read the article and it's uh, it's pretty good. So let's jump back into Jackie's after pictures of her kitchen. You've seen the before, and if you haven't, uh, you can check out in the replay uh, her beautiful kitchen with her blue countertops. There's a little <laughs> snippet there. But let's just yeah. jump over and we'll see the end product. So Jack, you took the doors off, you refinished the doors, you got new counter up, you got new backsplash, the whole works. You put right. up a beautiful OTR microwave. That's um, beautiful. Here we go. <laughs> Yes. So, so this, this is here. Jackie's new kitchen. I'm telling you, <laughs> Jackie, it doesn't look like the same room. It doesn't even look like the same room at all. I mean, other than the, yeah, it's the same layout. <laughs> like, come on, tell me that that's the same room. It totally looks different. It's it's a real good transformation. All right. Tell, yeah. tell us, tell us more about it. I want to know about the countertop. I want to know about your sink. Um, All let right. It, so, let it roll. Um, so the countertop and sink. We'll start with that because I noticed uh, straight away that just just making that change, removing the blue countertops. Um, and putting on this new one, which, um, you know, this one is called St. Laurent. It's, it's a Brazilian product. It's quartz. Uh, it, I mean, uh, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a granite 
and uh, it's it's really gorgeous. Um, I, it, it's considered an exotic stone um, with all of the um, the lines and stuff in it. I just thought it was so gorgeous, and I really thought it was a bit of a risk when I I brought the sample home, which I should have down here. I have the sample upstairs. I was sleeping with that sample for a while. I kid you not. This is how my mind works. I'm sitting there in the bed propped up instead of a book I have the sample on my lap and I'm rubbing it like it's a little you know pet or something like that and my mind is racing about how am I going to like how am I going to embrace this in the kitchen and I thought okay with the floors being the color they are that kind of comes out of there um thinking about a backsplash that would complement, that would not like, you know, clash with it, wouldn't overpower it, was not like white on white, Mark, <laughs> right. but was bright. Um, so I started, so everything started from that. So I knew that the white cabinets, because there's whites and creams inside of the, the granite, that, that there would be no problem, that they would complement each other. But, um, I went to a granite shop that they'd actually advertised that they were having a sale. And the thing is they had several packages if you were going to purchase 50 uh, square meters uh, square feet or less. Mm -hmm. And so um, I ended up, I think it was like 54 something. It was just a little over and they didn't charge because it all still worked with whatever the slab was I had. So um, they, they didn't charge me extra. Um, but so I got the countertop plus the sink and I had my choice. They had several sinks to choose from and the faucet, everything installed for 3,500, you know? Nice. And initially I was not going to, cause you know, I started with a $5,000 budget, but I ended up getting this uh, unexpected bonus of $2,000 after I had started work um, in the kitchen. It was money I was not expecting. And I was just like, now I can take the plunge, you know? I was gonna try some really, you know, cheap, wonky options and put them on YouTube to try to like dress up the the, the cobalt blue plastic but I didn't have right. to I could like go for the whole shebang and as soon as it was in there even with those orange glossy walls the room just looked like a different space I just couldn't oh, even big believe time. Yeah, yeah what the transformation it, it really makes the room I noticed your sink it looks like a single yeah Yep, it's a it's single, one of those single big, large. Yep, yep, it's a it's a huge single sink. I love it. And you know, we went back and forth. I have to admit, I wanted the double. I wanted it. My mom was talking to me, and we went back and forth. And I said, okay, we're gonna go with the single. And she was right. Like when I got it, I was just like, why? Because it was first three inches deeper than my mm. prior sink. And it was six inches wider than the prior. <laughs> you know? and Big so difference. It was a huge difference. I mean, in the whole yeah. way that the kitchen functions, because like before you get dirty dishes in the sink, I mean, they're piled up, they're spilling out. You know, here, if I have somebody come unexpectedly, I can put the dishes in the sink and you can't really even, you know, if I'm in the living room or they're coming in through the door, you can't see that. And uh, awesome. I, I love that, you know, I just love that about that. Um, so that was the first thing. Second is it, this picture. It actually isn't the final picture. Um, I, I think I forgot to send it to you, Mark, because you can see the base cabinets there still have yeah. the, but I was doing it a little at a time. So you can see how this was put together like a piece For of sure. the puzzle, but here you could already see where, you know, it's coming together. But anyhow, um, uh, I, under the, the cabinets that I had, the cabinets themselves, I painted them because they were like this you know, really dull gray color under the bottom. So I painted right. them all white under the bottom and then I put um, under cabinet lighting under there and that, that helped a whole lot. Um, I used yeah. peel and stick wallpaper, which, you know, I mean, uh, peel and stick, well, yeah, wallpaper plus peel and stick tile. Um, I actually do have a piece of tile right here. So um, this is the tile. Um, a couple of you guys have already commented, so I know some of you have seen the video that I put out um, about putting this tile up, but it's just real easy going. You know, you go in the back, you just peel it like that, and you, you stick it on the wall, and it's up there. And it's been there. Um, the most recent video I did was about three weeks ago. Um, it's already been on there about nine months. Doesn't show any signs of stopping, right? But it was easy. I could do it myself. I didn't have to worry right. about grouting. 
Um, I didn't have to worry about certain measurements and that kind of stuff or cutting tile using like a, you know, um, glass, mm -hmm. you know, cutting glass or, you know, whatever, wet saw. Yep. I didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, so I went with that option and it's gorgeous. It really is nice. It looks good. And it was something really that I could nice. check on myself. And it, it took me an afternoon. So I, I spent maybe three and a half hours and I, I had done the whole thing. Yeah. And above. It looks really great. There's that uh, wood beam up there, but I say wood. Yeah, beam I want you to talk about that. It's a soffit. That's what it is. It's like yeah. the space for duct work. And I got tired of it. I took some, uh, I actually went online and I got um, samples from Amazon of different types of wood grain paper that have real nice detail, you know, very uh, three dimensional uh, wood grain paper. I found that one that I like the most. And I took that wood grain paper and I uh, found the long pieces, right? So I could just make it look like a, a just one long beam. And mm -hmm. when people walk in the room, it what it does is it disappears. This, this whole thing is like fooling the eye. They don't even know that it's paper. And that's that's honest, mm -hmm. honest to goodness truth. I'm not saying that because I did it. Oh, it looks so great. People don't even notice it. And that, that was the whole point is to have it kind of fade away into the background and not be noticed. But it breaks up that tri-level ceiling that I had, you know, uh, one level here above uh, this uh, eating nook, the other level above the kitchen, and then that level for hanging the ca cabinets that just, I mean, it's just tacky. And it was yeah. all this glossy orange too that I just couldn't stand. And now it's something that's very palatable and it, it, it complements the backsplash, the uh, countertop, the floor. It all looks, looks good great. together. I, I know, and, and I can, listen, I can attest to that fact because when you showed me this the, on the last live stream after we chatted after the live stream is over and you showed me the kitchen like we talked about that 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 beam what looks like a beam and i was really impressed it looks like a wooden beam like yeah. you you couldn't convince me that that's paper you know yeah. by looking at it it looks really really good and that's just again like jackie did some really smart ideas i think mm -hmm. i think just they're really smart ideas like it makes the kitchen look like just that much better i guess is the right word right. plus painting the underside of those cabinets mm -hmm. that's a pro move so mm -hmm. if someone's renovating their kitchen and they're painting make sure you paint underneath the cabinets because again when you're doing custom cabinetry that's an upgrade like normally a custom cabinet is whatever the inside of that box is mm -hmm. that's what the outside is going to be so if you want it if it's white and you want it to be white underneath because you do see that when you're sitting down you can you can notice that at eye level um, it, it stands out and people don't like that. So to paint that the same color is a smart move. And just putting in the under cabinet lighting was, was really nice. Right. And you know, the under cabinet lighting, it didn't have to be expensive. That's one thing that I learned, um, to do all the lighting around the whole kitchen, which isn't a huge kitchen, but you know, it, it was mm -hmm. 70 bucks to get all those lights. Right. And, uh, um, I didn't hardwire, but I, I have, creative moves to where it kind of looks like I hardwired and I can take y'all through that. Um, you don't even notice that, you know, there's switches there, yeah. um, which, which I enjoy. And, and the, the, the key is like you have under cabinet lighting. Mm -hmm. And you know, it has, whether... it's like a lifestyle change, Mark. I'm like, how yep. did I sit around here with no light under here all this time? It's like my kitchen <laughs> actually got bigger somehow and I can see. Yeah. <laughs> and unreal. It looks so good. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a picture of your stove. What is this a picture of? There's a stove there, Mark, but um, that's not what I want to highlight from this photo. Is it what the beam? Wanna... Is it the cabinet handles? No, it's not What's the going beam. On? Even though the beam looks nice and those cabinet doors, they look pro. It looks like I bought those. I did yeah, not. They do, they do. I want to tell you guys, you know, my ring light is actually bouncing off of this thing here. This oh. is a brand new Whirlpool over the range slimline microwave. It's low profile. You can get it in black or black stainless. You can get it in stainless. You can get it in white. It is one third uh, smaller than your average OTR and your average OTR only gives you three, uh, 300 CFM. Um, a blowing power, you get 400 with this mark, 400, you know, that's approaching like really good. And um, that is really good. Yeah. 
I, I, uh, it can fit everything in there. I love the sleek profile. I love the fact that you don't see any buttons out there. You don't see no handle, no knobs or anything like that. Um, it looks really, really nice. And I was able to buy that Ikea cabinet that's up there. Uh, I assembled it with my mother's husband. We worked on that together. So thank you so much, Daryl Jackers, because he actually helped to make sure that I got that above um, my microwave. And then, cool. Um, uh, you know, uh, it actually was on sale. That's, that's how cheap I am. I got the one on sale because it was cheaper. It was only mm -hmm. 35 bucks but it was gray. So I had to paint it white as well. <laughs> and I put the handles on it, but hey, it looks like they're all together, but I bought this one and I put it with the ones that I made and nobody would ever know the difference. It's like so awesome. No, you it looks wouldn't. like it was all there all the time. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I didn't know that it was a an Ikea cabinet and yeah. wow. Got that looks off good. Ikea and it looks just yeah. like everything. It, it blends, you know, it's like a cousin, but it's a close cousin, not a distant cousin. So. You know, people think they're siblings, but you know, they're not related really, you know, but it looks like a close cousin. You like your OTR? That's the main thing. Mark, I don't like my OTR. <laughs> I love my OTR. Thank you, thank you. And you know what? Not only do I love it, it loves me back. And everybody on yeah, this yeah. call listening, it loves you too. You know, yeah. if we go over there and speak to it, it's going to speak back to you and tell you how much it loves you. As I told you before, I wake up in the morning, I sit down with my cup of coffee. I look over there at that machine and it says to me, Jackie, I love you. You're beautiful. And you know what? You're going to have a good day today. And I say, thank you, OTR. I love you too. <laughs> Lifestyle change. You know where that used to be? Right there where you see the coffee maker. I used to have a big, clunky heavy microwave sitting right there. It took up like a quarter of the counter space and it made it a dark dungeon in that corner. Now I have this up here. This is not just a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle upgrade. Actually, you know, I'm hanging with the big boys now. Like I'm doing like, you know, I'm moving and shaking. I'm on my way up. So, and it's, it's, it's all thanks to the microwave. I know you don't believe that Mark, but before that microwave, I'm a different person. Listen. <laughs> Here's what I like. I like that you <laughs> regained countertop space. I like that you were able to utilize your kitchen in a more functional way uh -huh. by gaining countertop space in your kitchen. So like, yeah, I don't like OTRs. It's out there. Everybody knows. However, I am a fan of function in the kitchen and whatever makes your kitchen functional for you personally, that's a pro. So pro move. I'm not going to say anything about your OTR because it does look nice. Well, what I will also say in this photo, um, it's something I want to highlight because we talked about it um, the last time I was on the show. Uh, the drawer there, I, and th th that's the that's the knob because I've got like five drawers in here. That is the one knob that never stays straight. That one on the bottom right hand side, it's yeah. It, even in this photo, it's 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 tilted. I noticed it. And, and you know <laughs> what I wanted to do was to you know because I wanted my kitchen looking perfect. I left the knob exactly like it is in case we go over there and look because this is what my everyday looks like. That knob is never right. straight. All the other ones, they behave. That one will never stay. I mean, I'll I'll fix it and tomorrow it'll be leaning again. So this is yeah. this is my reality. Jeff says, uh, oh, she's always moving and shaking. I'm not surprised <laughs> she's this awesome. <laughs> Jackie, you got some fans. <laughs> that's that's my that's my boss. You know, he makes me look. Your daughter's good, saying she don't miss that kitchen. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do this next one. Oh, oh Joanne, there's. Oh, by the way, you guys, since Joanne says flashbacks, I don't miss this kitchen. Let me tell y'all, Joanne is going to be featured in my uh, next video. It's my kitchen video that is coming out this weekend. Joanne, um, when she was in high school, she had a habit of telling me off and sending me videos about things that I had done. And see, she didn't know that I kept that stuff. And so one of these videos prominently featured her complaining about me not bringing my dishes down from the bedroom and like, you know, filling up the sink with dishes. I kept it. And now, so that you guys can see the sink, of course, I put in the video of the chastisement and um, Joanne's like front and center in that video talking crazy to me. So you don't want to miss that. I can't wait. Yeah, that's blackmail. See, you, you don't give me, you do not give me weapons to work with, Joanne, because if you do, I'm going to make sure that I use them. 
And if you hadn't recorded and sent that to me, I could put it in my video. You see? I, I um I gotta be careful what I say. <laughs> I don't wanna be I don't wanna be featured in one of your videos. <laughs> All right, here's a question from business developers. Uh, Jackie, what do you wish you would have done differently? Um, well, the main thing is um, I wish I had had the money to actually overhaul the kitchen. I mean, if I could have, I would have overhauled it. There are several little things here that I would change if I could. Um, those blind corners, they really do bother me. Um, mm -hmm. if we have time, I'll show you guys when I was putting together, you know, uh, the under cabinet lighting, uh, I had my friend, Irakli was helping me. Um, and he drilled through the cabinet cause that's a, that top cabinet's also a corner cabinet. Like you have to reach all the way back there and the one on the top left side, like, you know, to get back there. He yeah. accidentally ran the light through trying to like, you know, not have to drill through this bulkhead thing. And now there's light in the back of that, <laughs> the cabinet back there. And like, oh. it's stuck back there. It was like an unexpected, unplanned surprise. But it was after I'd done all the other lighting, I opened the cabinet now when the under cabinet lighting is on and the entire bag of that cabinet is lit up, right? And I That's thought cool. to myself, if I had done this first and seen how it lights up the cabinet on the inside, I'd have done them all. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. It was that's a happy accident, you know? That's an interesting thing, yeah. I mean, that's something to think about. Like, it, right, is, yeah. it is nice feature to have lights inside cabinets and a lot of people don't do not do it. I mean, it's an extra expense, of course, but it's cool that you have that one, especially because it's a blind corner. Yeah, it's a blind corner yeah. back in there. And now I have light back there. The reality is I still don't keep anything, you know, far enough. If, if I can't see it, I don't, I don't put it in there. But I can see to the back of that cabinet now. That, that never ha um, happened before. So that's something I would change. Um, and just functionality wise, uh, I, I can uh, take you guys through a couple of those things. But everything I have about... A Everything I, about the changes I that I've made. Oh yeah, everything about the changes that I've made is cosmetic. And so when I say that, you know, you're looking at, you know, let's say she's an 80 year old broad, but she looks like she's 35 now, right? Because she's had everything nipped and tucked, but she's still, her body is still 80 years old. So, you know, you go to open that drawer, it still creaks. You know, I've got right. little areas that are um, not well designed. And I can show you a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> series where I'm like, who did this? You know, why would they do this? I've got a drawer that doesn't open unless you open, like, you have to open the stove so you can open the drawer. Open the drawer. <laughs> because the design is just, you know, these are things that, um, and, and and to be honest, uh, for, for the business design uh, question, I had thought that when I got my next uh, oven range that I was going to get one with a different style of handle because that would help me to actually get more extension out of that drawer. And I just got so excited about that Frigidaire with the with the fifth warmer burner that that whole mm -hmm. thought went out of my mind until I got it in that space and realized I still have this problem and I had an opportunity to address it. But um, hey, I've lived with it this long. We're going to keep this drawer that doesn't want to open. We're just going to keep it a little longer. I mean, there's stuff in there, but I have to open I have to open the stove to open the drawer. <laughs> Gotta jump through some hoops. I have a question. Yeah. How come you didn't go with a, um, an overhang on that peninsula? Is there, is there a reason there's not enough room yeah, there? Because I, I had the option to do that. A couple of things. If you look at the back wall back there, there is a, like, I don't know what that is, a two and a half or three inch gap between the wall that the cabinets hang on and that back wall yep. where the mirrors are. Um, I, you know, I thought it would look funny to kind of try to wrap that on out and pull it around. I'm like, what's that going to look like? Because, it, it, you know, I thought that was going to look weird. The second thing was I actually have a neighbor who's done that, but she's got a smaller um, dining area. I mean, dining table and chairs, which most of the time it's OK, but, you know, a few times a month we have people here and I need the bigger space. And so cool. um, I knew that I was going to be sacrificing space here uh, to have that there. I did think about it 
and it was offered to me, you know, and it would it wouldn't have been that much more expensive. It was well within reason for me to do it, but I um, made the decision. You know what? I'm just going to keep it exactly where it is. I actually pulled it out further. The old peninsula did not come all the way to that um, that area that you know in the back of the wall that uh, mm-hmm. where you have the the gap. The the old um, peninsula uh, blue formica like stopped like an inch and a half short. Right. Uh, so uh, I told him to pull it all the way out to the edge of that. And, that, that, and that's the, the most I did with that. Yeah. But I did have the option. I, I, I decided against it. Patty, you run. Thank you, Patty, for, for joining us tonight. Bye, Patty. Appreciate having you on. So uh, let's see. I got one more thing. Oh, and here. by the way, with this peninsula, because we were talking about my OTR, and you're like, oh, there's got to be another space to put it. There's not much. But. No. Um, as 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 I told you, you know that's a double blind corner there, and so on that side, uh, one of my neighbors, she's like taking that final third of the peninsula. She's yeah. closed it off, and she's put bookshelves there, and she puts like her cookbooks and stuff over there. Okay. And I'm like, yeah. hey, you could definitely build a shelf there and put a microwave drawer or something, but, uh, you know, I didn't think no. about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks good. Barbara's saying that uh, White Kitchen not dead yet. Wink. I think that's a throw out to my video on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, White Kitchen is uh, still going. And, still going. You know, uh, this one was white when I got it. Uh, some people in, in this neighborhood didn't have white ones. I saw a mustard yellow one, uh, complete with mustard yellow knobs. I, I realized it, it wasn't too bad on my end. But um, yeah, I, I was kind of scared to go darker because I didn't know if it was going to make my space look smaller, to be honest. I, I, I played it mm-hmm. safe with that and kept it all white. No, oh, it looks great. Um, talk us through this. Now, this was already here. This 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 space was here. You had garbage in there before, garbage yep. can yep. or recycle or whatever you put in there. Right. Yeah, that's garbage. And it was there before. Um, and I decided to... Uh, just keep it as is. Uh, Long term, I'd like to put like, you know, a receptacle like drawer in there because I think that mm-hmm. would be nice. There's space for it um, yeah. to have a receptacle drawer there. But um, again, I was going with the footprint that I already had, like, you know, making my upgrades quickly um, to make it uh, a nicer space. But I've been researching on, you know, whether, because I'm like, uh, one of my concerns is if I get one that has like, you know, a shaker outline that's really tall, is it going to be looking funny being broken up by the two drawers on the side? I don't know. Right. You know, I got to right. think about how I want to do that. What it's going to look like. It's, it's also probably, well, no, it depends where you get it, but sometimes it's hard to find a uh-huh. framed cabinet. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, Ikea is going to be a frameless cabinet. You're not going to have mm-hmm. that, that, that rail style and rail on the, on the sides. Mm-hmm. Though I think Home Depot mm-hmm. sell a very similar cabinet style to that so do it is something you can but i mean i mean it looks it looks good the, that particular can is on wheels uh-huh yeah yep, okay. it's on wheels so if i need you know if i'm doing something where you know i'm cracking a bunch of eggs i usually just wheel it out you know so i can put all the eggshells in or you know um washing dishes and i've got some stuff that i need to throw in there i just wheel it up and then i just push it on back mm-hmm. yeah. so it's on wheels it's on casters jason b was asking where did the under ca- counter light uh, where'd you, where is it from? Where'd you buy I it? I got at? it off of, off of Amazon actually. And, um, okay. I bought three packs. Uh, so I've got three different connectors, um, uh, just based on what I could connect my kitchen with all seamlessly without, you know, going through like jumping a bunch yeah. of hoops to make sure everything connects. So it was, I think it was 20, $23, uh, a pack and I got three of them or $22, something like that um a pack it wasn't it wasn't that expensive um definitely would recommend it if you can swing it so quite a transformation jackie like you, you did you did all this work yourself it took time yeah. but like you did it i mean you saved mm-hmm. a lot of money by doing that y- you thought of some really great ideas along the way and you know and implemented those ideas to to really make it look sharp and i mean the difference between this and you know and that yeah yeah, and that's not even the because I had the the uh, lunchroom cafeteria box light up there on the top, you know, and I had already replaced that by the time I took this picture. Um, yeah, 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 it, it was bad. 
<laughs> so there it is. There it is. This is without the, I mean, the doors, obviously, this is with the blue countertop, uh, no, no backsplash. You can see the, 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 the soffit panel, like just, you know, painted, right. no cabinet above. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the microwave, where the is range it? hood. You see, the microwave is just taking up all its space. Taking up space. So, you know, and then you jump to this. Right. Yep. Yep. It's a different Huge space. transformation. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if you guys so you must be super it. happy. Like live. Let me see. I can show you because Mark has already showed me how to turn this camera around to the back camera. There we go. And let's see here so I can show you what I'm looking at. Can you guys see that? I don't know what you can see. Okay. Yeah, we got yeah. it. Yeah. So, so that's the kitchen now. And, uh, it's my mom's birthday. So that's the birthday balloons in there. Um, this, this spot right here, this is the everything collects right here spot. So all the mail. We all have that. I have one. <laughs> and and, all, and the, the junk drawer, it, it's that one on the right hand side. Nice. It's a whole. Gotta have a junk drawer. Yeah. 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 But, um, Kitchen is not complete without a junk drawer. Right. And um, I put these uh, mirrors in here. Here's my wonderful fan that we all love. Yeah. And I work from home. So this is the space that I'm working in here. So yeah, it looks cool. So much better um, than it did. And as I said, I'm putting out a video uh, uh, the weekend feature more photos as well as uh, footage of me making the changes. So if you guys are interested, I do invite you to go ahead and, and take a look. Yep. Okay, we lost her again. Uh, I think just because she's up moving around. Definitely a huge transformation. I'll wait for her to jump back on again. Um, huge transformation of that kitchen, and you know you can just see the the, the huge transformation. I mean, it's it's a, it's amazing how you can just take a space that she didn't change anything as far as the layout goes, change some key elements, made it a little more functional for herself, and bam! Oh, you just got this kitchen that is completely different, and. Um, Really great job, Jackie. Thank you. Really great job. Um, so let's have a look here. Any comments we want to highlight? I'm going to go back to the questions of the week here in a minute. Um, yeah, make sure you ask any questions that you want about kitchen design. I think, uh, where, there it is. Uh, Je uh, Jeff's saying it's time for some kitchen talk at work. <laughs> Why not? That's business. That's business. <laughs> Hey Jeff, tra uh, uh, trash cabinet. I have a lots of pictures from Jeff's kitchen. I'm gonna probably bring those on maybe next week. Um, he did a really great job. And Jeff is uh, he had a, a soffit panel with IKEA cabinets that come out further than the soffit, and he has lighting on top. It looks really sharp. Um, really, really cool details. These are some of the cool things that when you do a renovation, you can you can think through and and you know, just I love seeing this because Jack, like you highlighted, you did all these like, you know, little things that made a really big difference. And I think that's like, sometimes, like when I'm designing a kitchen, I don't think about some of these things, right? You do it so often, it's just like, it can be mundane. But when you're in the space and you're designing it and you're looking at it, you really think through like what you like, what you wanna have, what, you, what you've seen online or what you've seen somewhere. And being able to implement that is really, really, um, really pro. Uh, Jeff is also saying that a trash cabinet I have planned will be a, a door with a drawer front um, where the whole drawer will, will pull out. I have a similar one like that. Uh, there is a drawer on top of it. And uh, in my upcoming IKEA video, I go through the IKEA showroom, showing some organizational tips that, uh, or our organizational options rather that IKEA have. And that's one of the, the things that they do a great job of is just pullouts with, you know, some kind of functional accessory. And, um, so yeah, that, that is a good idea to do that if, if you're gonna upgrade um, that type of cabinet. Dion, I don't know if he's chirping you or, oh, he wants to see it opened up. Can you open the microwave? Yeah. Hey, oh, I just wonder, do you I, guys I, wanna see a demonstration on this beautiful microwave? There's not, so not, really. Of... <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not really. <laughs> but yes. There are two but sure. methods you can use to open this microwave because- Since you're like my I guest. Said, help yeah, yourself I'm a guest I can, I can do this 
Yes, yeah, says would love to see that. Yes, and you know what, Dion? Though I see it every day, I'd love to see it too. So let's let's uh, look at this. <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm gonna go fill up my water while you talk through this. <laughs> you know, haters gonna hate. That's all I can say. All right, so I'm gonna turn <laughs> this around, and I hope I don't lose connection again. Something happens when I get into this dead space in the kitchen. So I think the space oh, is no a little bit. Yeah. So here, you guys can still hear and see me. All right. Yep, we got right, you. So here we go. If I want to open this, I just hit this thing called the open button, right? Touch okay. that, and it opens. It's it's so awesome. So it opens itself. So again, for those who don't know how to open this, the button right there that says open, you touch it. Boom. There we go. And this is the upgraded model. So we have stainless steel matching inside here. And by the way, this is all nonstick. So I never have to scrub it. I just wipe it and everything wipes out. And it has temperature control. So you will never boil over or anything. You can never boil over your water or your coffee or anything like that. There will never be any of that happening because it actually is monitoring what's happening inside and it won't allow that to happen to you. Um, there's a couple more things about this that, uh, you know what, I'm going to save for my video because I am actually doing a video on this way. I love it so much and I love the fact Mark know that he loves it. So I'm going to make sure that, um, I help him to come to see the light, but, uh, there we are. Can I, can I comment? Yeah. I mean... There we are. It is my live stream. Can I comment? Um, you, you can comment, Mark, but I don't think it's going to okay. change anybody's mind. No, no, no. I want to. I want to make two comments. One, it's not negative, but to me, to me, it's just a glorified clock. But however, the ah. other thing, I like the, f <laughs> I like the fact that it's so. Like I like the fact that it's smaller. You know, mm -hmm. like that is a bonus. It's not massive, and I think microwaves these days are so big. Like, why are they so big? What are you? Yeah. You're not cooking a turkey in that thing. Even my microwave, right, exactly. it's got the fancy pull down doors, but it's just massive. Like, why does it have to be that massive? So and I'll give you a thumbs up on the, on the microwave. It's all good, but I yeah, can't wait to I see that video. A, I didn't want to put an OTR in there because I didn't think, especially with the ceiling being as low as it is anyway, it had to be dropped to accommodate yeah. the uh, piping above. Like I said, with plumbing, right. I didn't want to put one in, but my electrician came and, and in the, and he's it, pushing. Huh? Okay. The, yeah, well, the interesting thing is that there's a there's a standard height that that ventilation should be from the top of a range, and normally an OTR doesn't really meet that standard. It's it's right. normally quite a bit lower. So right. like that that one covers the bases as far as it does being correct. I saw your video talking about what the standard was, and I went and and I measured, and I'm actually a half inch too long, but I'm in there. I'm in the range. Yeah. No, that's right. That's right. Rose is saying, never discuss politics, religion, OTRs, or blind corners. No. I'll tell you something, though. I was at Ikea. Now, my video on Saturday is about my little trip to Ikea and some of the things I found. You're going to be shocked at my revelations about corner cabinets. All right? I'm just going right. to stop you right now. So. Hey, I'm looking I'm not on board. I mean, I, I don't like corner cabinets. I need some I still don't like corner cabinets, mind. but... Ikea does a pretty good job. Cool. Well, I'm glad that you're able to show us that. I, I do like the fact that it is small. I mean, that open button, hey. You know, but it does actually have a handle under the bottom. It's one of those hidden handles. If you just want to yeah. open it yourself and not wait the one second it takes for it to open itself, you want to just open it manually, you can do that. Jeff's asking, uh, did you do the backsplash yourself? You mentioned that you had, it's this stick, um, the stick tile. I did. And all I did was yeah. peel it up and put it. And Jeff, if you were subscribed to my channel on YouTube, you could watch the two videos that I've done already on this. So I guess I'm going to have to get you to subscribe. But yeah, you just peel it here, peel it like that and you stick it on. And this is a little like, sticky backing here and it sticks to the wall. And once it's on there, it's not moving. <laughs> Why spend thousands of dollars replacing cabinets when you can reface Jack? Your kitchen looks good. I think it looks great. I agree with Jeff. Um, sometimes it's not necessary and sometimes it is, but mm -hmm. you, 
it just goes to show you can do a lot. Let me fix my camera. You can do a lot with, you know, um, with doing it the way you did it to make it look fantastic. And I think we can all agree that it looks, it really looks great. And thanks. And, and um, one thing I wanted to yeah. say about that is uh, I did not start on a whim as far as in my mind, I had what I wanted it to look like. I had what I wanted to happen. I didn't know how I was going to make it happen, but I made up my mind in March of 2021, I'm doing this. And I didn't start work on it until the end of May. And so in that time from March saying, I'm going to do this until May when I started, I'm planning, I'm thinking, I'm color scheming, I'm researching, right. you know, I'm trying to get yeah. what that picture or the visual is going to look like in my mind during that time. Mm -hmm. And that meant I hung three different colors of paper up on the, the you know, the, the wood beam. I, I didn't yep. cover the whole thing, but I, I put, you know, some paper up there and let it sit for a week and walk around and see how I liked it. You know, right. I put a really couple smart. of colors of paint on the wall and walked around and see how I like it. You know, it's that kind yeah. of thing. Once yeah, I you launched, didn't just wake up in the morning and be like, I think I'll do my kitchen today. Right. Once I launched, I had already formulated that plan in my mind. Yeah. Deanna has um, a question. We have an empty soffit above our cabinets and our cabinets are real wood. Any thoughts on having someone add a row of cabinets? where the soffit currently is, uh, hoping to match our existing cabinets. Um, it's definitely possible. I'm assuming you have an eight foot ceiling with a 12 inch soffit. Um, and then your cabinets go to that. The only issue is that normally it's difficult to find, uh, unless they're custom made. So if they're custom made, yeah, you could definitely do that. And I would probably suggest going with, um, like a vertical lift or something that has a, a push, you know, opening above because you, it, when it gets narrow like that, the doors get really like they look like drawer fronts almost and they, they can look a little, a little hokey. Um, you know, if, if, unless they're, unless you have a nine foot ceiling, but I'm, I'm assuming you have an eight foot ceiling. So it can definitely be done. And, um, just you'd have to watch that that di that distance because your ceiling could be a little crooked in places and so not level means the cabinet wouldn't fit the exact same but it can it can definitely be done and i think it's a great look um if you can do that so i'm all for that if, if it'll if it'll work and it you know the design will will work so but you probably have 12 inches of space and if you get a 12 inch cabinet likely you're gonna run into trouble um so that's yeah you foot ceiling so so yeah, it's possible, um, but it should be custom made. You're probably not going to be able to find that in a, a store off the shelf, but definitely, definitely something can be done. I just, I just think a, a vertical lift door would be probably the best way to go. Nice. And it'll, it'll look good. The only issue with up there is it's, you know, probably not that useful, but as far as the look goes, it, it'll definitely enhance the look of the kitchen, especially and if it's empty. Know. Dion's wife's name is also Jackie, Jackie Manley. Dion, shout out to Jackie. Tell her I said hello. 12 inches base, yeah. So that, that would be my that would be my take on it. And and yeah, I think that would be I think it's at least good to explore the options that you have there and and, and you know go to um, somewhere where you can someone can design, you know, show you what that would look like, you know, and, and the sizes of those cabinets, the widths and, and what they can make. But it's totally doable. Good question. You got people inspired, Jackie, to do some renovations to their kitchen. That's the thing. <laughs> That's what these before and after pictures really, you know, help us do is like, well, you know, I want to, I want to do something to my kitchen now. I want to, I want to make it better. In fact, you know, my kitchen is, is new when we, when we renovated this house, but even I want to do little things. I went to Ikea and I'm looking at all these, like, what can I get to make my kitchen more functional? And uh, mm -hmm. I found this pot lid thing, you know, it just looks like an accordion kind of, of, of deal. And it just pulls out, you put it in your cabinet and all, all your pot lids stick in there. And you know, simple, but it, it makes the cabinet a little more functional. So awesome. All right. So keep the questions coming. If you have any questions for Jackie or myself, please uh, put them in the chat. I'm going to jump over for a minute to the questions of the week because we had a Dolomite question. I want to talk about the next one, which is... Is Stopes Soap Stone a good countertop choice? Now I'm going to respond the similar way I did with Dolomite is Soap Stone is not that popular in terms of what's being pushed on the market. And again, in all my years of designing kitchens and selling cabinets, Soap Stone was not something that we would ever deal with, at least in my geographical location and with what people were interested in. So when this question comes up, I'm 
starting to point a lot of people to Jeff over at Homestead Studios. He has a great video that he recently uh, put out a couple weeks, few weeks ago, all about soapstone. And I will link to it in the description below because it's it's it just gives you the information that you need. So the, the information's there. Uh, he does a great job presenting it. So I'm going to put his video in the description of this video. Check that out if you want to learn more about Soapstone. And if you haven't subscribed to Jeff, he's got some really great content on kitchen design and kitchen trends and, and everything kitchen related as well. Jackie, do you know anything about Soapstone? I'll put you on mute because my mom's in the room. Happy birthday, Patricia. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> she, she doesn't want to be on camera, but she said thank you. Did thank you hear? You. I hear you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> hey, um, Mike, thanks for joining us. Yeah, Soapstone, unfortunately, I don't know much about Soapstone, and I hadn't done any research on it, so I, I If Soapstone works in a chemistry lab, why not a kitchen? Exactly. It does work in a kitchen. It's a great product. Um, it looks wonderful. It looks beautiful when it's wet. Uh, just... Mm. Uh, you know, it's a really nice, really nice countertop. But Jeff does a great job at just breaking down all the details about it. So really, really good. Oh, yeah, it has a soft look to it. It's not like a glossy sheen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's really beautiful. But if you've been in a biology lab or a chemistry lab, uh, yeah, you've probably seen soapstone. I did sell some soapstone stone, stone sinks uh, in the day, but never, never uh, ca uh, countertop. All right, on to the next one. I see people jumping on. Hi, Anna. It's nice to have you on. All right. Uh, my contractor scratched my quartz. Can it be repaired? It depends on the quartz, if it can be repaired or not. Quartz is repairable to a certain extent. Um, you know, so yes, yes and no is the real mm -hmm. question. You need to have a fabricator come out and look at it, assess it, whether or not it's able to be repaired your contractor should definitely be the one on the hook for that um, hopefully there's no problem in getting them to you know help you out with that because you might be reading this going I you can scratch quartz like I thought it was the be-all end-all and no it is scratchable um, and that is something that you, you do have to watch out for though it's very durable you know it's it's very good countertop, but nothing is indestructible and everything can be damaged if you really wanted to. I'd say if you want a scratch proof countertop, you're probably better off looking at what's called an, an ultra um, compact surface like a porcelain or a deck. Decton is a, like a brand name. Um, very, very scratch resistant. But can you can, can this be repaired? Yes, but maybe not. Depends on how bad it is. Have a fabricator look at it. Go after your contractor. Make sure that they help you with that they, they should i mean if they want to have a good name in town they should help you so that was a good question let me jump back to the comments all right mike has a question i have a reno happening yeah is it more cost effective to paint the built-ins or install rtas jackie what do you think now i know you didn't install new cabinetry but you did you did you painted your cabinets yeah and yeah. Um, I can say, uh, just on the painting side of things, um, there's a lot that can go wrong with painting if you're doing it yourself. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm assuming if, if he's gonna, if he's gonna hire a contractor, um, you know, painting is the way to go. You can get a factory finished look, but you know, um, with painting, I did my research and I actually spent, uh, buku money on good paint, you know, like a gallon cost me like a hundred bucks, but it was the stuff right. that, uh, um, it's self-leveling, you know, it's really hard to mess up. If you sand, you wipe down really good, you make sure you don't have any grit or anything and you just put it on there, it will level itself out and the finish looks really nice. So I can say from the painting perspective, um, I, I found the painting to be to be easy, just time consuming. It, it wasn't hard. Yeah. Um, uh, Mike, but you have um, to be consistent. Mike, this is a, a this is a rent um, this is a, a rental unit, I'm assuming that you have. And if that's the case, I'd paint them. If you're not going to gain any, like if it's not going to, if you're not selling the property, like you're, you're not, if it's, it's this, this is not a flip, um, but if you're going to have this as a rental, um, I would definitely just, I would paint them if, if the layout works, it, it works. And 
I, I wouldn't worry about, um, oh, you're putting it back on the market. RTA, change, change it up, you know, definitely I would go RTA in that case. I mean, yes, cost effective with painting, but maybe not the best solution. So I, I would, if you're gonna put it back on the market, Mike, and flip it, I'd, I'd change the cabinets and just get, maybe like upgrade the layout probably a little bit, get some, uh, you know, cabinets that are operating better. So t talk to me about it next time we uh, hang out. All right, a couple things I wanna bring up here. Um, okay, yeah. Jeff has uh, Jeff's Jeff's countertop series is great. So he has a series uh, in the last few weeks about all kinds of different countertop options, and yeah, it is great. I definitely hi highlight that, and that you should definitely check that out because um, the information's out there. He does a great job of presenting it, and you know I'll link to a bunch of those videos in the description of this one because it's it's a really good one, a lot of good information. Uh, Jackie, do you have an air fryer or Instapot, and if so, where do you plug them in? And Mark, do people today want space for air fryers and Instapots? Jackie? Yes. Um, in uh, the last time I was on, I told you guys I'd started giving away um, appliances. And that is the air fryer is one that I gave away around six weeks ago because I wasn't using it very much. Um, and I also gave away my crock pot uh, because I got a new Instapot for Christmas. And uh, that Instapot does not get uh, nearly enough use. So it is in um, the basement, actually. And it is worth my time to pull it upstairs when I need it and put it back when I don't because it's not going to be that labor intensive. It's not like I'm doing that every other day. So I would rather have the space here. And um, I don't have a pantry cabinet or anything like you see, you know, I'm, I've got meager offerings here. So. Um, no pantry for that, so I'd rather just kind of keep it in a storage area for and, and pull it out when I need it. Cool. Um, I yeah, people are asking for space for different things, fryers and supports, um, you know, all kinds of accessories. Anna saying that uh, I had Mark add a cabinet just for my Ninja and accessories recently. So yeah, we did a, a kitchen um, design and, and layout, and you know. We all have different ex uh, small appliances that we use frequently and and some people do, some people don't. So yeah, I, it is something that I see people wanting more than not. You know, more and more people want a space for their things, their things that they use frequently. And it's important to think through that when you're doing a kitchen design. So if you're doing a brand new, you know, brand new kitchen design, you need to think through where is this gonna go? Do I want it to go somewhere? Um, do I, like Jackie is saying, do I want to have a countertop microwave or do I want to free up that space? Like what, what's my options and picking the option that works best. So yeah, it's definitely something that, that people are, are considering. Uh, let's see. Jeff saying I painted all my cabinets too recently. They turned out great if the cabinets have good bones and you have um, some tools, uh, oh, tools like rotary sander, you can save a lot of money. So it is, and he highlights that it is definitely time consuming, which it is but it's definitely doable and um, you know, should it be done professionally? Well, I, I think, I mean, any everything should be done professionally, but that doesn't mean that's necessarily the best way to go. So, you know, if you can do it and do it well, do it. And of course it's your kitchen, you're living in it and you have to be the one that's the most happy with it, not, not anybody else. Uh, question here, we're adding a 24 by 24 inch pantry to our kitchen. Do you have any suggestions on how to create the storage? It'd be custom floor to ceiling just by just by as many pullouts that you know probably five pullouts but you know would be probably normal um for that pantry that's in my opinion the best thing just single pullouts uh it's if you know it's full uh, 24 inch so you're gonna have you know they're gonna be a little bit narrower just because of the, the cabinet size to me that's the best way to make the that type of cabinet functional. Now there's lots of different pullout racks you can get where the whole thing pulls out. You can open the door and it's a metal rack that pulls out that spins. There's all kinds of, I call them trinkets out there or just gadgets that work. But the best solution in my opinion is just single pullouts. Everything's right there, full extension pullouts. They're not super expensive. Um, and you could, it's actually something you could build yourself if, if you wanted to. So that's my, my two cents on that. Jeff's asking, what's the most popular countertop that you would recommend to your clients? Um, I don't know. The, the one you can afford. <laughs> you know, I'm a fan of granite. I know it's not popular in terms of what 
it's trendy, but it's just, it's so durable. It's so beautiful, it's so unique. Um, of all the countertops that, that you can get out there, I think granite's a really good choice. Quartz is nice. I mean, I love laminate. That's what I have in my place. Um, when clients ask me for recommendations like that, it, it's really tough because I, you know, I don't want to say one or is better than the other in the sense because they have different features that, that make them better. You know, in my opinion, I think porcelain is the up and coming countertop that we should be looking at. However, like I said, what can you afford? I love granite and I think it's a good choice. And I think that um, quartzite is also a great choice. So, but whatever, whatever you can afford, whatever you love, find the color that you love and uh, find a good fabricator. That's really important. So, all right, let's go to another one. Then we'll wrap it up really soon. What? <laughs> hey, Ashlyn, what are some, what are the most important things to consider when deciding on a kitchen contractor? Um, I would prefer if it's not their first job, you know, I, I would prefer that. I would prefer that I see a few examples of their work, um, you know, and just get a feel for them personally. Like sometimes we, hopefully we, we can just get a, a connection with people that we think, you know, I think they'll be right for the job, but, but if it's important to see their work, that would be the really important thing. So a contractor I know does this, he takes clients to another client's house and goes through that house and shows them the kitchen, shows them the work he does. He's confident in his work. If your contractor isn't confident enough to take you to another client's house and that client not hate him, not want him in the house because he messed up so much, that's a good sign. That's what I would ask. Hey, can you take me to a previous client and show me their work? Show me the work you did. Um, that's what I would suggest when you're looking for a, a, a good contractor. You can, you can see their work and, you know, that's important. And there, because if they're like, well, I, I don't, I don't have any previous jobs. Well, okay. Maybe you want to give them a shot. You know, I don't know. You, you want to say, Hey, okay. You know, you can, I can be your, your, your Guinea pig. That's fine too. If, if you, you know, but that's what I would do. Look, look for some previous work that they've done. Everyone's got to start somewhere though. So, I mean, you know, you, you, know, you might want to give them a chance. Maybe they're super nice. Maybe they're, they, you know, they're, they're going to give you a good price, lots of stuff. So that's what I would consider, I guess. All right. <laughs> you won Lindsay over. She wants to pull out the pantry. Well, there you go. You're welcome, Lindsay. And you're asking, Mike, can you install pull out hardware on the bottom of the drawer directly on the shelf or does it have to be attached to the cabinets? No, I, I, I installed my pull outs in my pantry directly on the shelf. Um, you, they don't have to be attached to the, the gables. So you can, you can install them directly. Just make sure the sh shelf is secure. So yeah, you can do that. Um, uh, there's, it depends on the, on the, the, bra the type of rail it is, but, um, I'll, I'll take some pictures of mine, Mike. I can, sh I can send them to you to show you what they look like. It's super simple to do and makes it really easy if you want to, uh, if you want to do it quick. Um, and I'm a fan of trying to make it easier because installing Hardware like that is difficult. All right, what's this one, Mark? I've been pinning you to my Pinterest a lot lately. I'm learning that. Well, that's cool. I don't know if I've ever been pinned to Pinterest before. This is this is this is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Bluebell saying, uh, "Thanks so much for doing this. It was great." Yeah, Jackie, it's awesome to have you on tonight. I really appreciate you walking us through your kitchen and just your personality overall is is great on on this on this show. So I. I I appreciate it. And everyone else obviously appreciates it too. So thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the one last question on questions of the week. And this was more of a comment that someone made laminate. No, thanks. I have kids and it wouldn't stand up. Jackie, you have, you had laminate. T talk to me. How, how did it stand up for you? Yeah. Um, there were issues with it, but you know, it was, you know, really stanky ugly in the first place so i wasn't so concerned because i do have kids and um you know there, there were kids in this house long before you know my daughter got married you know um i've i've, I've always had kids here uh, it took a lot of abuse and so even like taking just your regular sponge with the scrubby side of it you know you get like some stuff like some jam or something dried on there and you're trying to like scrub it off now there's some sort of funky looking worn spot there that never goes away. But 
the good news is you start getting worn spots all over it. So it like looks like right. a pattern of worn spots. You know, it's yeah. like its own natural, I don't know, veining or I don't know what you call it, but um, it, it was uniformly disgusting. I didn't like it, but I know now that they have new, um, you know, stuff that looks like real stone and it's come a long way since the seventies yeah. and, you know, you can, and I've seen some that's just gorgeous. So um, I don't yeah. knock it. I would definitely put laminate in, in my, in my house, knowing what I know now, because I've done a lot of yeah. research on it, but uh, no. Yeah, I, I am, I am not um, obviously against laminate at all. I think it's a great choice for countertop. Um, and I have, you know, w we have three kids and we've had laminate in all of our kitchens you know, and basically because it's, it, we just can't afford to have something more expensive than that. So, however, in saying that, you know, I am very um, strict around the, the, the seams in the corners. You know, I don't want any water. That's, that's the only spot you got to really be careful of. And um, other than that, like laminate countertop holds up really well under normal use. Of course, if you put something really hot on it, it can delaminate and bubble and you'll have a problem. But generally speaking, under normal use, without those accidents happening, like laminate is not that bad and you can replace it at a really, you know, good price down the road if you want to change it. So I was not a, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not against laminate, obviously I love it. So, but that's not to say I wouldn't upgrade if I had, you know, the opportunity. So, you know. Yeah, and you get some laminate patina going on. <laughs> just scrubbing that thing. I, I've seen some old laminate that you know just have that has that scrub mark scratched out, and it's you know has that um, the character, I guess, of life. So that's great. All right, Jackie, I think we're gonna close shop. So I want to say thank you to you for being on. I really appreciate it. Uh, next week we'll have some other. Uh, guests on talking about their kitchens as well and, and what their kitchens look like now and uh, you know whether it's a renovation or a, you know a, a real beautiful facelift like we have with this kitchen with Jackie's um, or maybe it's a brand new kitchen we're not sure yet but uh, so yeah if, if you're interested in that in future episodes of the live show just just email me uh, I'll throw my email up here real fast you can well that's my website uh, where's the email well, you can just go to that website and find me. It's uh, mark at mtkd.ca. So that's the best thing to do if you want to just connect with me like that. Of course, if you have any kitchen questions or anything related to kitchens, put them in the comments and I try to answer as many as possible. Coming up on, on uh, Saturday is my IKEA video where I'm going through the showroom looking at some organizational tips. On Sunday, Jackie, you're dropping a video about your kitchen, right? That we just talked about. That's exactly right. And you're going to see the whole thing. thing. Make sure you check out that video as well. Um, it'll be really good. Of course, in the description, some uh, videos that Jeff has on his channel and uh, some articles about different countertops. Definitely check them out if you're interested. And we will see you hopefully on the next live stream. Jackie, thanks so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Stay on for a few minutes. We'll chat and uh, we'll say goodbye to everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, everybody.